What's up everyone, welcome to the video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about my top toolbar up here and all the great features that are in there that I highly suggest that you guys add to your toolbar. Maybe you'll find some items in here that are useful to you. So if you wanna make a toolbar, just go to any of your toolbars, right click on it, open a toolbar and open one that you haven't used yet. You should have extra toolbars that are ready to go at the click of a button. So for me, I hit a button and I have my VST instruments that load up. I have my favorites. I also have another one for my UHE or UHE uh, synths. And then I have another one that pops up for my plugins when I'm doing mixing and mastering. This is all the Melda stuff. And it also has all of the slate stuff that I have over here. You can also set the placement of it by doing the position. This one's at the top of the main window. That's where I like it. If you want to move it somewhere else, you can always do that. But for me, up at the top of the main window works. Now, first and foremost, you're going to want to have the SWS extensions installed as well as RIA scripts installed. To do that, just go to the websites linked in the description. These will allow you to use Reaper in a lot more advanced ways than you normally would. So if you ever want to know what your icons are and you forgot, let, let's say re, we renamed this. For example, over here, I have one that just says pitch and mute. And I forgot what they're named. I'm just going to right click it, go to customize toolbar, go to the item, right click it and go to change action. It's going to bring up the action list for you. And then you can see what it's actually called in the action list. So first button up here is going to be the SWS extension toggle selected tracks height. And what this allows me to do is just by click of the button, it's going to just change that one tracks height. I hit it again, it brings it back to my specified height. That's done also in extensions under command parameters. That's where it's getting this height from. So track height A is 80 and track height B is 340. And if you want to change these, you can easily change these. So if I hit that button, it changes it. The next one is the SWS extension minimize selected tracks. That's going to be uh, my shortcut for Q. And what that means is it's just going to minimize that track when you select off of it. So if I hit Q on those, now they're small. I was used to another piece of software that had three buttons right here that would minimize, maximize, and then make a middle size version of it. Since I don't have that, I use these buttons all the time. Next up is going to be the script default 6.0 theme adjuster. And that way you can just pull up the theme adjuster quickly. Next up is going to be the theme development show theme tweak configuration window. And this will allow you to tweak the theme and the colors. And the theme tweaker is extremely important for me because I like to have things a certain hue and certain colors really stand out to my eye. So this is the way I like it to look. I know this might not be something you guys like. You might want something really dark or you might want something really light on the eyes, but you can make all those changes in here as well as change the MIDI item. So if I wanted to change how the MIDI item appears, you can make a lot of the changes in here as well. So again, if you want to find any of this stuff, have your action list open and you're just going to be searching the name of these items. Now this one is going to be insert empty space. So there it is, moving later items. And this is a cool feature. So if I right drag on anything, it's going to do something with my mouse modifiers. I'll go into my preferences here. And I'll go into mouse modifiers and you'll, you'll see the default action is marquee select items in time. But I also have changed this. So if I double click here, it also sets the time selection. That allows me to just drag, sets the time selection. Then if I go up here and I hit time selection, insert empty space at time selection, it will move everything over and give me that empty spot. If I want to delete that, then I have time selection, remove contents of time selection, moving later items. So I'll move it back. So if I select an area here, hit this, it moves everything over. And this can save you a ton of time, especially if you're messing with, hey, I don't know if this verse and bridge are gonna go right here, I might wanna change that. It just allows you to give yourself some more space or take it away. Next up is going to be uh, item grouping, group items. Put a control and select this one, this one, and this one. And then I go to item grouping. Now those three items are grouped. If I wanna ungroup them, then use item grouping, remove items from group. This one is going to be show all takes and lanes. All right, so if we had three takes right here and it's defaulted to on. So if I wanted to just show this take, I can hit that and it's only gonna show that one. If I wanna bring all the takes back, I hit it again and now it shows all of the takes. Next one is take explode takes of items across tracks. So if I have these three takes that I did, recorded them, and then I want them to all be on separate tracks, I just select them, hit the button, 
and it's created three tracks. Uh, the next one is going to be take implode items across tracks into takes. Next up is going to be take delete active takes from items prompt to confirm. So if I didn't like this take and I wanted to delete it, I just hit this button because normally if I hit the delete button on my keyboard, it deletes all of the takes. But if I select this one and hit this delete, it's only going to delete that one take. Next up is going to be the uh, SWS extension reposition selected items. So let's say that I was doing some vocal chopping and I you know, sliced up these areas. If I wanted to space them out, I could go into here and I could add from the item end, I could add point, you know, eight seconds. Now it's going to space them out. Next up is my sidechain routing. So this button really is just a reminder for me of how I can do the side chaining. Uh, it's control plus number delete. So I just select whatever tracks I want. I could select multiple at a time. And then I just hover over the drum bus or whatever the actual track is where I want the side chaining coming from. And I just could do control number delete. And now it's going to open up on each of these tracks. It's going to have the side chain and it's going to be going to that track. So just a quick and easy way to do side chaining. Next up is going to be custom insert new track from template. So if you ever want to do a custom action, it's just basically combining multiple actions. So if I go into my action list and I look up this one, which is insert new track right here from template, and I go to edit action, it will show you what actions are being used. Track, select all tracks, select last of selected tracks. That way it adds the track at the bottom of the list, and then it will load track template. I could always delete this um, and create a new action. So for example, I'll remove this and let's, call this from template a save it now it will load from whatever track is selected right be beneath it in fact i kind of like that better than adding it down to the bottom of the list before i was doing it at the bottom now i'd like to do it wherever i have it selected so now i hit that and it inserts that track right there now that track template, where that track template is coming from is going to be wherever you save your track templates and it goes off of the numbers. I know this might sound a little confusing, but if I go in here and I go to insert track from template, this one right here says 01 in the title. So that's where it's going to pull from. So again, if I go back in here and go to edit action, it's going to load track template 01. So it needs to have 01 in the track template name and that's where it shows up here. Right here, it says 01 negative 16 dB gain stage track. The next up is going to be the show peaks. All right, so if I bring in an item here that has spectral peaks, you'll see that it shows up when I select spectral peaks. If I just go to normal peaks, it's going to be the color that I've selected in my media item. And then over here, I can do a spectrogram. I can also do spectrogram plus peaks. Um, so let's just leave it on spectral. And then you can see kind of where it changes in the frequency range. Next step is item properties, normalize item. So if I have this little selection here and I want it to be louder, I can go to this button. It's going to bring it up the closest it can before clipping. Let's say I wanted to do it for this item here, select it, and it brings that volume up. All right, so now let's say I wanted to get all these to be normalized to a certain one. So let's say I only wanted this one, this one, I can do control and click, and I can select these items. Now I'll go into SWS normalize loudness of selected items. Hit that. Now I can pick what volume I want it to be playing back at. It's going to show up in LUFs or LUs. And let's do it at negative 40. And now it's going to take those and it's going to bring all of those uniformly down at the same volume. Next up is going to be uh, SWS fill gaps between selected items. So if there was a gap here and I select these two items and I go to fill gaps, I can select how much space I want, stretch if needed, preserve if there's a transient, and all these different options in here. Let's do uh, 15 second, milliseconds. So now if I hit it, it will bring them together. Next up is item dynamic split items. Um, I'm not going to really go into dynamic split. There's a great tutorial about dynamic split by Kenny Joya. I'll leave that link in the description as well. Highly encourage you guys checking that out. Next up is going to be uh, put selected envelope in media lane. So let's say I have a volume envelope on this track. I'll hit V for volume. That's the way it pops up with my shortcuts. I think that's how it is stock in Reaper. But anyway, so if I wanted to put this on the actual media item, I just select that button and it's going to show up here. 
if I wanted to then take it back off, or let's say I had multiple ones on here and I wanted the one that I've selected, you just click it and hit this one. SWS put selected envelope in envelope lane and it moves it to its own lane. Uh, then I have show all envelopes for all tracks and then hide all envelopes for tracks. Next up is going to be, uh, I have pitch on here. So if I select this item and I select that or hit P on the shortcut, it's going to show up here and I could change the pitch of just this one item. Go to the item, right click it, go to change action, and it will show you in the action list what it is. So this is take toggle take pitch envelope. Next up is going to be M, which is for mute. And then the next three here are all the same. It's going to be track, toggle track, mute, track, toggle track, pan, and then track, toggle track, volume, envelope, visible. So that's going to be these three right here. Then I have a custom action. Um, so we'll go in here, go to change action, and this is hide lower section. So normally down here I have my media explorer and my mixer. So if I hit this, it's going to hide both of them because normally you would have to go in here and then select media explorer or hit control H and then go to the mixer control M. But instead of having to hit two buttons, I just have this one that combines the both of those. And again, to do a custom action, just go up here. You'll see that this is under hide lower section and we'll edit the action to take a look at it. And it's just view toggle mixer visible and media explorer show hide media explorer. Next up is going to be the script amalgama grid settings button. So if you wanted to really fine tune your grid, you could do dotted notes or uh, triplets and all that. And you can select in here. Now, I already use these right here. If you notice, I'll have the uh, whole note, half note, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth, and all, and all that. So if I go into change action, take a look at these. These are all pulling from the same region of grid set to one, to a half, to a fourth, to an eighth, sixteenth, thirty-two. 64. Now, I also have J and K selecting in between these two. So J makes the grid smaller into the uh, up to 64th notes, and then K brings it back all the way up to whole notes. It's just a shortcut, but it also allows me to see where it is. So if I'm hitting J and K down here, I will see where my grid is up here. That's why it's a nice visual reminder to have up here in your grid. Next up is item quantize items position to grid. So if I take this item here, just drag it slightly off the grid, take this one and this one, drag them slightly off the grid. Now if I select all three of them, let's say I wanted them to be quantized to 16th notes. I just select 16, 16th notes, and now they will be quantized to that portion of the grid. Next up is going to be split. If I right click this, now I can split everything wherever my mouse cursor goes. So if my grid was really small and I've got it armed, I can just go in and select anywhere I'd like and it's going to split just by using the mouse. So and the action for this is just items, split items at edit or play cursor, which is the same thing that you always use for S, but if you right click it, now it's armed. Next up is gonna be glue items. So that's item glue items. So let's say all these items here, I wanted to glue back together. I just glue them and now they're all together as one item. So let's say this item, I wanted to have this weird fade going into it. So I'll select a fade here. And then over here, let's say I want a really long fade out uh, like that. Now, if I select these and I go to item, glue items, including leading fade in and trailing fade out, it will keep those fades in the glued up item. So now it has that fade out and the fade in as well. Next up is gonna be track set to custom color and that will be the entire track. So I'll select that one and let's say I wanted it to be red, it's going to change the entire track. Now I can also do the takes. Let's say I recorded a vocal here and this part right here I split and I'm gonna want this to be a different color because this part is a little sharp and I wanna go in and make changes to it, but I'm just trying to quickly showcase where it is. I can just hit this button and it will change it to a random color. That's gonna be take, set active take to one random color. A lot of times I just like to click through here really quickly. There's a nice color, a yellow, and I'm done. I can also use this button, take set active take to custom color, and then I can select the color that I want, more fine-tuned. Next up is gonna be the script me to beat set item length to 0.5. So it's just gonna make this item go faster. Uh, so if you listen to it normally, this is what it sounds like. Now, if I hit the button, and it also goes the opposite direction, which is set items length to two. Now it's gonna slow it down. So 
So that might be very useful if you're doing kind of vocal chops or stuff with pianos and reverb and you want to reverse items and add these huge swelling effects. Next up is going to be add stretch marker at cursor. Select there, select that, and that's item add stretch marker at cursor. Now, if I wanted to snap stretch markers to the grid, I can select the grid over here, of course. And let's say that this was a little bit off. So I'll move this over. Now, if I select these and I hit snap stretch markers to grid, it will snap it to whatever grid I've selected here. Make it a 64th. And then let's hit it again. And it will snap it to a 64th note. And last up is going to be the variator. So let's say I want a little variation in all of this. I can select all these pieces, go to the variator. I can select where I want the volume to be variated. I can do the pan, the pitch, the tape stretch, rate, position, content, length, fades, fade shape, file. I'm not going to mess with the content and file because that will actually change the file and it's being selected from the folder that it's in. Uh, so I don't want to hit those, but let's say well, I just want to affect the rest of these. I can also change how much or how little it's going to affect the volume the pan by selecting these knobs over here. Now, if I mutate it, mutate it again, it's going to mess with all of these settings and how much you want them to be changed. So it's a really cool script. I highly recommend downloading it. It is completely free, of course. And that is my top toolbar. So in the next video, I'll show you guys how you can customize your actual toolbar, your main toolbar here. And then I will show you how you can change the transport down here to make it fully custom as well. And in another video, I'll show you guys how you can customize your MIDI item toolbar. So if the video is out, just click up here. Now, I hope this video helped you in deciding what you want to add into your toolbar. It is precious real estate, so just remember that. Just use stuff that you use all the time. Sometimes I find it's easier to just click an item and then click and not have to remember all your shortcuts. Shortcuts should be for things that you use constantly. Your toolbar should be things that you use from time to time and you don't want to have to remember a shortcut for. So again, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, put a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next one.